YouTube. So um, I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna do a make a shirt using a Cricut. Um, the Cricut machine that I have is the Explore Air 2. Um, but I'm just gonna do a real simple design. I'm gonna show you guys um, what all it takes to make a shirt. And um, yeah, so first thing I'm gonna start off with is showing you guys how to make the design on the computer. Um, and once you make this on the computer, I'll show you how to print it to the machine. Then I'll show you how to press it to the shirt. that's compatible with the Cricut machine. Like I said, I have the Cricut Explore Air 2. So um, I'm gonna use this software to go ahead and make my design. The design I'm making is gonna be from scratch and it's going to be on this t-shirt here. It's gonna be a real simple design. This is the heat press that I have. Um, this it is, because I really don't know too much about this heat press because my wife bought it for me. But, so we're gonna start here with the design. So the first thing that you wanna do um, is you're gonna wanna add your text. So you're gonna click here on this text box. Okay, and then I'm gonna type what I want it to say. So this shirt is actually going to be um, a pregnancy announcement. So the way the shirt's gonna read, and let me bring this up higher. Okay, the way the shirt's gonna read is the first, it's gonna be three lines. The first line is gonna say Mary. Then we're gonna have the second line, Mary on top and Christmas on bottom. I don't want it side to side. The way the shirt, I'm gonna make it and have Christmas at the bottom. Now I'm gonna type in Christmas. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to alignment and I'm going to hit center because I want it to be obviously centered. Now I'm gonna hit text box, the text box again. And the reason why I'm gonna hit text box again is because I'm going to add a third line, but this third line I want it to be a separate font from the Merry Christmas. So this line's going to read we have now um, the font that I want to use for Merry Christmas obviously I want it to be a really pretty cursive type font what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a font from a website called thefont.com that's thefont.com so here I want to look for like a really pretty cursive like something like this so I'm going to click on here under the fancy column, I'm gonna click on curly. And here I'm gonna type in Merry Christmas just so that I get a preview of what my font's gonna look like. Excuse my son in the background, he has a very bad call. So I typed in Merry Christmas here and I hit submit. And so here it's gonna show me, uh, the font is gonna show me the preview of what it's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna until I find something I like. I like this one. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to download. And this is gonna download the font to my computer. So if you notice here, um, it's gonna be in a zipped folder. This is really important because when you save this to your, your computer, you're gonna have to actually open up the font and you're gonna have to extract. Um, and what this is, is it opens up everything in the folder and it allows you to use it. If you keep it zipped, it just keeps it compressed and it's just to save space. So once I extract, um, it's gonna open a new screen, which is gonna be this screen. And I'm going to make sure that I double click on the true type font. So it's either gonna say true type or it's gonna say open type. This is what's gonna be compatible with your computer. So you're gonna double click on that and it's gonna bring up this screen and you're gonna hit install. So it's installed. I'm gonna exit out of these boxes. I'm gonna go back to design space. Now this is really important. So at this point, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to make sure that you save your project. You can just title it anything. I'm 
found in this particular outfit. So once you save it, um, you're gonna want to refresh your screen. So that's the reason why we saved it because if you refresh your screen without saving it, it won't have um, your text on there. So the reason why I refresh my screen is because I need to let my system know that I brought in a new font. If you don't refresh your screen, you won't be able to find the font that you downloaded. So since um, I saved my project, I refreshed my screen and now I'm gonna go here to font and I'm going to type in the name of the font that I just downloaded and you can see here it's called Forgiven Script. So I'm just gonna type in um, the first few letters and there it is. So once I click on it, now my font has been um, changed. So since this font is cursive, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make all of these letters attached because the way that this looks, um, you see how they're all separated here. This is not the way that this is supposed to read. I see a lot of people making shirts and they print the shirt like this. This is not the way that it's supposed to look. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to advance or I'm gonna undo the letters because I want I want to be able to move each letter individually. So after I undo the letters, I'm going to bring them closer together. So I'm gonna make them attach. Um, okay, so here now I have my font and this is the way I want it to read. So now I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, going to highlight all of this and I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna go to weld. This is going to make this image stick just the way that this is. Um, otherwise, when I try to print it, um, all of these letters will be all over the place. They won't stay together. So when you weld something together, it's exactly what it sounds. It, it makes it to where it's going to appear exactly like this and you cannot alter it. So I will do this. Now I want to make Christmas bigger. This, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go to the hat because I want this to lock in. I want this. You could you could have welded it as well, um, but I'm just going to attach it so that it stays. See how when I move it, it stays together. So now for this font, I'm going to use um, just a handwritten type font. I'm going to see if I have something here. Christmas to be what stands out. So now that I have this here, now that I have this here, and this is how I want the shirt to be. So I'm gonna highlight it all again and I'm gonna go to align and center horizontally just to make sure that that all looks centered. Now I'm going to attach it once more just to lock it all in. So the reason why I'm hitting attach instead of weld is because attach allows you to go back and unlock them. So if I go back here and I go to detach, now I'm allowed to move these um, around freely until I decide that I wanted to put them back. If you weld something, it's locked. And you're, once you once you weld it, you you really can't un, you can't separate it anymore. Weld means it's there, it's stuck like that permanently. So now that I have this here, I'm just gonna make sure I align it. Okay, then I'm going to attach it. Now it's stuck. Now when I move it, it's all gonna be stuck. So now the next thing I wanna do is I want to uh, measure how big I want it on the shirt. So okay. okay, so we have our shirt here. So I want my design to kind of be about, about here on the shirt. So I'm gonna get my mat here. So this is my mat um, that my vinyl's gonna go on. So using this mat, I'm gonna see about how big I want the design. So um, I want it to start about here, and I want it to end about here. So um, the width of the design is gonna be about eight inches. So now that I pick that out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the computer. So the design here that we have So um, you notice that there's this little lock symbol, so with that, 
um, whenever you change the width, it's automatically going to change the height. If you wanted to say, say I wanted this to be eight inches wide, but I wanted it to be five inches um, long. What I'm gonna, or sorry, tall. What I'm gonna do here is I would, I unlocked it, and then I'm gonna go to the height, and then I'll enter five, and then I'll press enter, and see how it drags it out. I prefer it to stay in ratio, in proportion. So I'm going to leave it locked, and I'm just gonna have it print like this. So I think that eight. Well, actually, I'm gonna do it eight and a half. I think that that's gonna be a good size. So you see how I leave it locked and it stayed in proportion, the whole thing just got bigger. So now that I have my design the way I want it, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to make it. So that's gonna bring me to this screen. So I am doing um, HTV, which HTV is heat transfer vinyl. Heat transfer vinyl. I am using heat transfer vinyl. So you wanna make sure that here you hit mirror. And the reason why is because here with my vinyl, this is the side that's gonna show on the shirt. And you can't really tell, but it, it does have a protective film over it. So when I when I have my machine cut it, I'm actually gonna cut it on the back side. So since I'm putting it on the back side, I want to make sure that my design is mirrored so that way when I turn it over, it's gonna, um, appear on the shirt correctly. So I'm going to stick my vinyl again, it's HTV, I'm going to stick it upside down on my mat. And this is a, a standard grip mat. So it's a, I have it upside down at about six and, six and a half inches across the mat. So here I turned it sideways so that it starts here as well. Now what I'm going to do is open up my machine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place my mat here into the groove. And you want to make sure you get it in there nice and, nice and snug. So that way when you press load, it pulls it in there even. So now that I have that in here, I'm going to go back to my screen. And here at the bottom, I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to bring me to the next screen. On this screen, it gives you the chance to make sure that you have your material set to cut correctly, and it gives you the option to have fast mode. I always hit fast mode, um, but here, where it has this, the way you change these settings is here on your machine. So depending on what you're cutting depends on the setting and what it on. I'm doing iron on, um, and since I'm doing glitter, glitter is a little bit thicker. So I there's different settings here. There's regular. There's a regular iron on, and then there is an iron on plus. So you can see here when I change it on the dial, it changes it on the computer. So again, I want the iron on plus because I'm, it is glitter. So now what I'm going to do, since I have everything ready to go as I want it, if you click here, you can see your design. It's placed exactly where I want it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this flashing button. And it is going to cut the design as shown on the computer. And here on the computer, it'll, it'll also show you the percentage of that it has left. So I'm just going to let that cut. And then we'll be back once that's done. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Okay, so um, now the machine has finished cutting the design onto our vinyl. Um, and it says 100% on the screen. And it's asking me to unload the mat. So I'm going to click this button here. And it's going to um, give me the vinyl. So you can't really see here, but um, it's, cut, it's cut the design about right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, take this off of the mat. And I'm going to weed out the um, excess that we don't need. Okay, so I'm going to take the vinyl off of the mat. And I'm going to cut around the design. Glitter is hard to see, so just make sure that you don't actually cut your design. I'm going to put away the excess. 
and now this is gonna be um, the design you can't really see it so what you have to do is it's called weeding and I'm here using um, this Cricut sorry, this Cricut tool um, that came with my machine and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off what we don't want on the shirt so you Okay, so make sure that you place um, your material down with the actual vinyl on the back side, touching the shirt. And this is the way it's going to read on the shirt. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put it into my heat press to press it on there. Now, you're supposed to use a Teflon sheet, which I have here, but when I'm doing a single color design like this, this plastic on top actually acts as a barrier. So you don't have to, I don't have to use a Teflon for me. Um, if you're a first timer, I suggest you using it. Um, I have this little blanket, this receiving blanket on my machine, on my heat press, and the only reason is, is because I got some something on the underneath it, and I don't want it to transfer on my project, so I just have that there just for safety. So now I'm going to place this um, design on my sponge underneath. So now that I have that there, I'm going to put my heat press down. I on 340. My machine has a timer, but I never use a timer. I just uh, do it for a couple seconds. So I'm pressing the machine down. And I can usually wait like 10 or 15 seconds. It all depends on your machine, how high you have your heat, and then the material that you're using. I'm actually still learning how to learn something.